Well, perhaps the most pressing question in Libya right now remains the whereabouts of Colonel Gaddafi and his confidants. Each day that passes only adds to the speculation. Today, a large and highly armed convoy of vehicles believed to be carrying cash and gold has crossed the country's southern border and into neighboring Niger. It's thought key figures close to Colonel Gaddafi may be trying to flee the country, though this has been denied by the authorities in Niger. So, what do we know about this dash across the desert. Here's our diplomatic correspondent, James Robbins. As long as Colonel Gaddafi is at large, he and those close to him are a real threat to Libya's future stability, and he still seems able to inspire loyalists to fight on. So rumours that he might have escaped into the desert of neighbouring Niger with some of his family are being watched very closely. These are nomadic Tuareg tribesmen in the vastness of Niger. In return for past favours from Colonel Gaddafi, some fought with him against Libya's uprising. Now reliable reports from the town of Agadez in northern Niger describe a convoy of pickup trucks carrying both Tuareg men and Gaddafi fighters. It was apparently heading south, deeper into the country. Britain now has an envoy back in Tripoli. He's not at the British Embassy, ransacked by Gaddafi loyalists in May, but he's already assessing events, including the convoy story. I think it, it points to an underlying, I hope it points to an underlying uh, fact, which is that uh, many of the pro-Gaddafi forces are realising that the game is up. Very little about this apparent escape from Libya is clear, but the mysterious convoy reached the remote town of Agadez. Then it headed out towards the capital, Niamey, some 600 miles further on. It's not clear if that is journey's end, or if the intended destination is still further, perhaps in Burkina Faso and its capital, Ouagadougou. In Niger, President Issoufou won elections in March. He's trying to stabilise the country. Sheltering Gaddafi or close allies has few obvious attractions. It's true Colonel Gaddafi was close to the previous leader, Mamadou Tanja, but that era is supposed to be over. It's unlikely that Niger will want to take on the colonel, given that he's clearly on the losing side. There may have been links in the past between Niger and some other countries and Libya, but there's been no real warmth in terms of personal relationships, and that now is clearly history. And tonight, the United States State Department in Washington has said that some senior members of the Gaddafi regime were in the fleeing convoy, but not Colonel Gaddafi or members of his family. So the hunt goes on, because Colonel Gaddafi at large, able to keep urging his loyalists on, well, he remains a major threat to Libya's chances of peaceful transmission towards democracy. James Robbins reporting there. Well, for more on what's been done to track down Colonel Gaddafi and the parallels it has to other leaders who went into hiding, I'm joined now by retired Lieutenant General James Dubik. General, thank you very much for joining me. You're um, let's talk about some of those similarities, particularly with the hunt for Saddam Hussein in Iraq. It seems like just yesterday. Um, but are there any parallels? Well, I would, I would list three. Uh, first, there'll be no silver bullet. It'll be a combination of uh, information received, and that's my second point, from technical intelligence, human intelligence, from rumors and tips, and from operational intelligence, captured materials and, and people. And then last uh, parallel, I think, uh, is this. There'll be plenty of misinformation, plenty of false leads, and lots of uh, erratic behavior rushing to where we think the answer will be, only to find it to be a dry hole. So are there lessons to be learned then? Because, of course, it took eight months before Saddam Hussein was caught. The, the key lesson, I think, is to stick with it, to uh, have a system for gathering the intelligence from a variety of sources, analyzing it uh, as quickly as you can, and translating that analysis to a set of orders and forces that can act upon it. Uh, short of that, again, there's no silver bullet in these kinds of activities. Now, where's the intelligence coming from and who's supplying the resources? We don't know the absolute answer to that. I think it's safe to assume that NATO, uh, the, U the U.S. is part of NATO, is providing some technical means. Uh, but most of this is going to come from a combination of technical intelligence, human intelligence, networks of people, uh, relationships with people, and uh, tips from local uh, uh, Libyans. 
Now, of course, the National Transitional Council says that most of the country is now under its control. It's really focusing on re-establishing law and order and rebuilding the country. Can they actually do that while Gaddafi remains at well, large? Well, for me, that's the big risk. Uh, the, the National Council, Transitional Council, is correct. They must focus first on ending the fighting. They must focus on what's called transitional security tasks, protecting citizens, protecting infrastructure, preventing looting, preventing revenge killings, preventing the arms and ammunition that Gaddafi had from falling into the wrong hands. They have to build their own legitimacy by making the citizens feel safer and better off. And they have to expand their legitimacy in the international community. Every day that Gaddafi stays at large, the, that focus puts is at risk because they're going to be everybody talking about Gaddafi and where is he? And presumably there's the danger also that he could still be a rallying point for resistance. Well, he is a rallying point. Uh, to what degree is, of course, uh, an issue. And arguably, the less and less degree, the better the rebels and the transitional uh, National Council does. But as long as he is uh, at large, and as long as he uh, can inspire some followers, then fighting will continue and the risk of potential guerrilla warfare, which he has referred to himself, uh, is also uh, present before us. General James Dubik, thank you very much for joining us. Welcome. Thank you.